Hi, I'm Leslie McVeigh. Welcome to CTN Member Highlight. Today, my guest is Ron Romano. Hi, Ron. How are you? I'm fine. Now, you have um, become somewhat of an expert on Bartlett Adams, who was a stone cutter here um, in the 1800s. Right. Um, and now you are trying to educate us about the art of the stone cutting. Exactly. Tell us how this happened, and you're going to be giving a, a talk soon. Right. So why don't yeah. you let us know where that yeah. is okay. right off the, the bat? Yeah. Okay. The talk is going to be at Mechanics Hall, mm -hmm. uh, 519 Congress Street, and it's open to the public. Um, it's free, 7 p.m. on June 5th, Thursday, June 5th. So it's coming up. And will you have slides? And oh, yeah, it's a slideshow, oh, and I'll show a lot of examples of Bartlett Adams' work. So people can come, and we're going to do some context about early cemeteries and gravestones, but I'm really going to focus on Bartlett Adams' life and times here in Portland in the early 1800s, and there's a lot of slides to show his work, his actual work. Well, why don't you give us a little teaser on, on who, he, who he was and how you got involved. Yeah. Well, let me say how I got involved first. I really got interested in this whole concept of stone cutting and in Bartlett Adams in particular because I was doing my family genealogy and I found some really cool old gravestones with unique carvings on them. And it led me back home right here to Eastern Cemetery in Portland where I then found the Spirits Alive group. And then from there, I decided that I really wanted to research Portland's first stone cutter, Bartlett Adams, because nobody had really done that. And his presence here is huge. He is responsible for hundreds of the stones that we find today at Eastern Cemetery. So I really wanted to kind of explore his life and family and times here in Portland and look at his specific work and identify his work and now share it because it's really kind of a cool thing. Well, and it's beautiful. I, it, the audience can't see this, but I have a, a little picture on this card of one of the, the carvings, and it actually looks almost contemporary, this particular one. Yeah. Um, and I know there are some that are a little more ornate. Right. And, um, tell us how families would go about having these done. Right. And how he became the stone cutter. Right. Well, originally, before he showed up in 1800, um, Portland was, you know, really isolated, mm -hmm. so people had to travel by sea. There were no good overland roads, and so if somebody died, they would bury them at the cemetery and um, oftentimes just used a wooden marker or a found field stone. Wealthier families would travel to Boston and have stones cut there. So when he showed up in 1800, he really had a corner on the market. He was the first guy here who was a local stone cutter with a shop, which is now um, on Fed where Federal Street and Exchange are and so he you know showed up and set up his shop and all of a sudden people didn't have to travel to Boston and so there's many many families that started to buy stones for their loved ones and even went back in time and purchased stones for people that had died many years ago just to have that just to have that permanent marker yeah, right yeah I know that one of my ancestors was buried in the Eastern Cemetery, and he's on the list of, of those that have been lost because right. it was a wooden marker. Yeah, there's lots of, um, there's still a few stone markers left that are unmarked, just mm -hmm. field stone, but a lot of people had them replaced over the years, and a lot of stones have been damaged and lost, but we still have about 700 of Bartlett Adams stones at Eastern Cemetery, so oh I'll show examples of them during my talk. And we'd love people to come into the cemetery and explore on their own and find them. Yeah. Once, once you come to my talk and learn what his style is, uh -huh. you can go to the cemetery yourself and kind of wander through and find them. Now, is his work seen in other areas in the city? Yeah, uh, it is actually. We have a few other early cemeteries in Portland, mm -hmm. and he's in all of those. But I've also been surveying uh, early cemeteries throughout the region. So 25, 30 mile radius from Portland, I've visited probably 150 cemeteries and I've found um, about 1,500 of his stones that came from his shop over the time he was here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, huge. That is huge. Yeah. So yeah. about half of that is at Eastern Cemetery right here, right. just down the... Right here. Right here. Yeah. And the others are all spread out among early cemeteries throughout Southern Maine. And you're going to be doing walks throughout the summer? I am, yeah. We at Spirits Alive, which is the organization I'm with, mm -hmm. we host... Um, historical walks 
through the summer on the weekends, Saturday, Sunday, and on Wednesdays in the afternoon. But I'm going to be doing a special walk to really focus on Bartlett Adams' work. And that's going to be the last Saturday of every month, June through October. Oh, fabulous. And people can check our website for the specific yeah. times and things. Right. You know, so the all details. the people out there doing genealogical work right now, this might be really important yeah, to them a lot if of their families came from this area. Exactly, because so many people do genealogical work and they find out where their person is buried. Mm -hmm. But now we can start to say to them, and guess who carved the stone? Guess who did the oh. artwork on that stone? Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I think it sounds wonderful. I think I see a book uh, in the Maybe. future. Or a movie. <laughs> or a movie. <laughs> so I, I look forward to hearing the talk. And Great. And on, on June 5th, coming right up at 7, it is. 7 p.m. Just this week. Just a few week. more days, yeah. Right. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Yeah.